If you are a regular listener of this program, you know that I am completely opposed to Christians drinking alcohol. Recently, I came across an article written by Brother Bill Boyd that I'd like to share some insights from today. The article is entitled, Whiskey in the Meeting House. Now, why would we find it ironic that a bottle of whiskey would be found in a house of worship? Well, the answer is obvious. Worship nourishes sobriety. Whiskey nourishes dissipation. They simply do not go together. The old Philadelphia Meeting House in Warren County, Tennessee was built in the year 1830. It was used as a regular place of worship until the 1960s. And after it was no longer a place for regular worship, it continued to be used for special events and an annual homecoming and fellowship day. And on those days, former members and friends would come from miles around for dinner on the grounds, and they would go into the building, and they would worship God together. However, the building had fallen into great disrepair, and some were fearful that it would simply collapse. But in the 1980s, an effort was put forth to restore this old building. And during the renovation, while they were taking up loose floorboards, someone found a bottle of whiskey that had been hidden in the floor of this church building. How it got there, how long it had been there, no one knows. But whatever the story, everyone knew that a bottle of whiskey should not be at the meeting house that was built for worship. Now some wanted to save the bottle and put it into their museum building, but someone poured out the whiskey on the ground and broke the bottle. There's a story in the Old Testament about strong drink being brought into the tabernacle. Nadab and Abihu offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not to do in Leviticus 10 and verse 1. It was not fire that the Lord had specifically forbidden. It was simply fire he had not authorized. By telling Nadab and Abihu what fire to use, all other fire was excluded. And God was not pleased with these priests doing as they pleased in worship. And it was time to teach everyone a lesson about discerning between that which is holy and that which is profane. Therefore there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh to me, and before all the people I will be glorified. Friends, this is why we do not use instrumental music in our worship. Instruments were used in the old temple worship, but that form of worship is not how we worship in the church. God told us to sing, and in the New Testament there is no mention of instrumental music in the worship of the church. Mechanical instruments produce music which God has not commanded. When it comes to holy worship, instrumental music is a strange fire. It is a strange music. We worship in song as God has directed, and by doing this, it glorifies God. But there's more to the story. Why did Nadab and Abihu use strange fire? Was it a deliberate act of rebellious self-will, or were they neglectfully careless in their discernment? Well, perhaps it was more of the latter. In Leviticus 10, verses 9 and 10, the Lord said, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. Well, it sounds as if Nadab and Abihu had been consuming strong drink, and because of its debilitating effect on their discernment, they had been neglectfully thoughtless, about what fire to use in the sacrifices. We see that alcohol robs its consumers of their ability to discern. This is why Solomon said that wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 20 and verse 1. Now some try to excuse their foolishness because they were drunk, but that's no excuse. They chose to drink. And it's not the abundance of wine that dulls discernment. It's the first drink or two that does that. Friends, strong drink is still raging. And it's not drinking to excess that is condemned, as we see in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, but the excess is in the drink itself. A bottle of whiskey is a bottle of raging excess. And if you find a bottle of whiskey, you would do well to follow the pattern as they did in Tennessee, to pour it out 
and to break the bottle on the ground. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and have a blessed day.